The introduction of airmail services in the United States was a momentous event in the history of mail delivery. With the emergence of airplanes, the United States Postal Service took advantage of the new technology and began transporting letters and packages through the skies, leading to a significant improvement in the speed and efficiency of mail delivery. The photographs showcased here are a rare glimpse into the planes, pilots, and support staff that made airmail services possible. From the early biplanes that were used to carry mail to the larger and more advanced aircraft that followed, these images offer a captivating view of the evolution of airmail technology. These vintage photos capture the thrill and sense of adventure that was inherent in the early days of airmail services. For the pilots and support staff involved, this new mode of transportation required courage, skill, and dedication. One iconic moment in the history of airmail was when Fred Wiseman flew two letters from Petaluma, California to Santa Rosa, California on February 18, 1911, becoming the pilot who carried the first airmail sanctioned by a U.S. postal authority. The first scheduled U.S. airmail service took place on May 15, 1918, using six converted United States Army Air Service Curtis JN, for HM, Jenny biplanes flown by Army pilots. The service operated on a route between Washington, D.C., Washington Polo Grounds, and New York City, Belmont Park, with an intermediate stop in Philadelphia, Bustleton Field. In the early days of airmail services, pilots had to rely on landmarks and dead reckoning to navigate since there were no reliable instruments, radios, or other navigational aids available. As a result, forced landings were common due to bad weather but fatalities were rare thanks to the plane's small size, maneuverability, and slow landing speed. To improve delivery time and attract more customers, the Department of the U.S. Postal Service planned a transcontinental air route from New York to San Francisco. The first two legs of the route opened in 1919, with stops in Belafonte, Pennsylvania and Bryan, Ohio, while the third leg opened in 1920 and included stops in Iowa City and St. Louis. Feeder lines were also established from Minneapolis and Chicago. The final transcontinental segment, from Omaha to San Francisco, opened on September 8, 1920, with stops in various cities in Nebraska, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada. Although mail was initially carried on trains at night and flown by day, the airmail service was still 22 hours faster than the cross-country all-rail time. In 1920, the Department of the U.S. Postal Service began installing radio stations at each airfield to provide pilots with real-time weather information. By November of that year, 10 stations were operational, including two Navy stations. When airmail traffic permitted, other government departments used the radios to send special messages, and the Department of Agriculture used them to broadcast weather forecasts and stock market reports. Pilots flew in open cockpits in all kinds of weather, in planes that were described as a nervous collection of whistling wires, of linen stretched over wooden ribs, all attached to a wheezy, water-cooled engine. A 1918 article titled A Practical Hints on Flying advised pilots to always remember that the engine may stop and to keep this in mind at all times. Unfortunately, unpredictable weather, unreliable equipment, and inexperience resulted in frequent crashes, and 34 airmail pilots died between 1918 and 1927. The original airmail letter rate was 24 cents per ounce between any two points on the route when service began, and the first special purpose U.S. airmail stamp, C-3, was issued on May 13, 1918. The first airmail service in the United States was initially a government-operated, exclusive transportation of flown mails by Army pilots flying converted Curtis JN for biplanes, which eventually transitioned into commercial air carriers under the Kelly Act of 1926. By the mid-1930s, the U.S. Army Air Forces temporarily took over the airmail routes, but this was short-lived and eventually returned to commercial airlines. However, the air mail scandal of 1934 led to the cancellation of all CAM contracts, and domestic air mail became obsolete in 1975 as a distinct extra fee service. In 1995, international air mail also ended as the USPS began transporting all long-distance intercity mail by air on a routine basis. The air mail service marked a significant milestone in the history of mail delivery, 
revolutionizing the speed and efficiency of mail transportation, and these vintage photos capture the planes, pilots, and support staff that made it possible.